My name is Anthony Davis. I'm one of the attorneys that works with uh, Christopher S. Nudo. We're a law firm in the Rolling Meadows area. We service most of Northern Illinois. Our focus is estate planning, real estate, both residential as well as commercial probate. And then also we do quite a bit of uh, small business issues as well. We have an office located both in Rolling Meadows as well as out in Elgin. But our purpose today is just provide a very, very basic introduction to trust estates and wills, hopefully demystify a lot of that legal language that bogs us down so much and um, set a firm foundation so that you have a better understanding as to what estate planning consists of. So without further ado, in the state of Illinois, when somebody passes away, what typically occurs is that estate will go through something called the probate court system. Probate is a court system that's very, very creditor focused. So the idea behind it is to make sure that any potential creditors know that someone has passed away so that they can attach to the estate and get paid the money that they're owed out of it. Anything that's left over is going to be distributed to the heirs. The way that those heirs are going to be determined is in one of two ways. If we prepared something called a will, what the will is going to do is tell the probate judge how it is that you wanted to have your estate distributed. In my opinion, wills are pretty good instruments. When a loved one passes away, there tends to be a lot of emotion. Everyone has a different movie playing in their head. And the will goes in and it resolves a lot of those subjective concerns. If we don't have a will, then what the probate judge is going to do is just look at the one-size-fits-all probate statute, and that probate statute is going to tell the probate judge how it is that they are supposed to make those distributions to whom and in what percentage. Well, I think wills are pretty reasonable instruments. They're good instruments. They do require probate, and probate doesn't have the best reputation. And this is due to both the cost and the time that's associated with it. So in the state of Illinois, a probate will typically take between 10 to 14 months to complete if it's not contested and moves fairly smoothly. And then the cost for it, I would say right now, $6,500 to $10,000 is a pretty fair estimate. And that number encompasses both attorney's fees as well as various legal filing fees. Also, it covers a variety of the different kinds of obstacles that can pop up during a 10 to 14 month period that the probate is ongoing. If I have a client that isn't interested in probate, what they've typically done is done a little bit of online research and they stumbled across something called a revocable living trust. And I just want to translate that real quick because a lot of those online articles, I feel that the information is presented in a very technical manner with a lot of legalese. To demystify trusts, all that they are are big contracts. That's it. Trusts fall under contract law. Wills fall under testamentary law. So what this means is that if a client has prepared a revocable living trust, what they've done is they've gone to an attorney and they've paid that attorney to draft for them a custom private contract, privately distributes the estate outside of the probate system rather than having it go through the probate system. And that's it. The last piece of the puzzle are these things called beneficiary forms. Not every asset type goes through the probate system. So our bank accounts, retirement accounts and our insurance, and insurance includes both annuities as well as term and whole life insurance, these asset types do not need to go through the probate system as long as we've designated beneficiary forms. All that a beneficiary form is, is it's a designation that declares who it is that you would want to receive proceeds from that account if something were to happen to you. The way that this plays out in the real world is that if you've set those beneficiaries, and that typically means when you open the account, you'll be prompted to designate beneficiaries. If you're not sure, you can always go to the institution and request to see the beneficiary forms. But what will end up happening is that upon the passing of the account owner, one of the family members will get a death certificate go to the institution with the death certificate, and then that institution will pay out directly to those designated beneficiaries as they are listed on the form, and they will do so outside of the probate court system. For most American families, the item that is most likely going to trigger that full formal probate is going to be the house, any kind of real property. So tracts of land, 
houses, condos, these kinds of assets are typically what trigger the full formal probate and are oftentimes the major focus of estate planning as many clients want to avoid going through the probate system. Though we also do still want to be attentive to tax issues as well as minor children issues and other important parts of that estate planning process. So I think we covered a lot of good ground. If you have follow-up questions, feel free to reach out to me. Again, my name is Anthony Davis. I'm one of the attorneys that works with Chris Nudo. We'd be happy to set up a consult with you and go over the specific details of your estate with yourself and the rest of your family.